Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to Essentially Jacob. Today marks the beginning of winter, so we're going to do top 10 perfumes for winter. The winter season is cold, and a lot of us need some warmth to counter that. I, for example, dress colorfully, so the colors kind of combat the cold winter, gray days, and really long nights. But also the smell is something that combats the cold. In some cases, in other cases, you might want something to zhuzh up the feeling of coming summer or spring. Winter is an interesting state of mind to be in, in general. Everybody deals with winter in a different way. I personally like and enjoy winter, even though I know that usually in winter, well, that's the season to get sick, to get the flu, to get a cold. But it's also a great time to collect yourself, to re-envision yourself, reimagine yourself, reinvent yourself for the next year to come. So let's get to the selection of the top 10 perfumes for winter. First, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, you can also join me on Patreon, Super Jacob, all spelled together there for extra perks. Thank you to all my patrons who have pledged. I'm filming this video live in front of a live virtual audience, so I will be reading the chats of my co-conspirators as I go along with the list. For those of you who are watching me live now, it's also fun to guess which perfumes you think are going to be in this list, but also to share with us your favorites for winter. So, <clears throat> here we go. Now, the first one, hmm, a masterpiece, a masterpiece. This is a beauty to keep the spirits warm in winter. Now, this one is usually mostly always in my selection for winter, but because it just is a beast. Opium, Yves Saint Laurent, the pure perfume, but if you enjoy the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum, why not? I love the extrait, so this little beauty here is very, very much a strong, strong perfume for winter. Uh, it keeps you warm, heated, passionate. Um, there's a depth to it. It's very Byzantine. Now, you know, we don't use the term Oriental anymore. Um, so it was born as an Oriental perfume, but now if you were to reclassify it, Heck, I would give opium its own its own genre. I would just call it the opium, the opioid perfume. You know what I mean? So this one is amazing. Uh, super warm. The little tassel is adorable as well. It keeps you happy. It keeps you guessing. And it keeps you really, really cozy and sensual. Very sensual. So opium is definitely one to look forward to in winter. The next one also perfection. Um, it's not a perfume I like to wear in really hot weather. I think it really works well in winter uh, in all three concentrations, Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum, and Parfum. And that would be Coromandel by Chanel. I have here the Parfum concentration, but uh, there's also, you know, Eau de Toilette, no, no longer in production, but I do have quite a bit of stock left over the toilette and then there's the eau de parfum as well which is still in production but coromandel it's such a beauty the patchouli and the white chocolatey vibe in here are just so luscious earthy but at the same time warm uh it's a beauty it's a beauty in winter coromandel no matter which concentration you're into, you know, you don't have to get the extra if you don't want to. You can also go for something else. Um, now, the next one <clears throat> for the depths of winter, when it's really, I mean, if you're in the part of the world where it's snowing a lot and it's everything is frozen and covered up and nature, re you really get a sense of dormant nature, nature sleeping. And like as if. Nature is your lover that has left to go hunting for food and is going to come back many, many months later. And you're kind of alone, but you have that knowledge and that hope that your lover will return back to you. You know they're going to make it through the wilderness, uh, to quote Madonna, and then they're going to come back to you, right? And that sense and that particular type of smell through an incensey, meaning also almost um, 
spiritual type of vibe is Zagorsk by Comme des Garçons from the Incense Range Series 3, or was it Series 5? Series 3. Series 3, Incense, Zagorsk. This particular uh, version of the incenses that Comme des Garçons sells, they have five of them. Zagorsk is... It also has carrot in it. It's a very fascinating smell. Such a beauty. This uh, fragrance in winter, <clears throat> it also smells of snow in a very weird way. A powdery snow. It's amazing. Really, really, really beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful for winter. Incense Zagorsk. Series 3, Comme des Garçons. It's a 50 ml bottle. They only sell them in these bottles. And... Um, Oh, it's it's artificial, you know, like most all Comme des Garçons fragrances. But the incense in this one in particular is a frozen type of incense. It's not that warm, heated up. It's like a frozen incense. Really interesting. Zagorsk is definitely great for winter. Um, now the next one on the list, and also it doesn't really break the bank. These, you know, they are kind of niche. -y, the Comme des Garçons fragrances, but they're, you're not going to spend, you know, $200 on them. This this one is, I think, under 100 I don't know if they went up in price, but it's around about the $100 mark or a little bit less. Um, <clears throat> allegedly, because at this point, you never know what the price is. They're all like, kind of jumping up and down. It's crazy. So the next one on my list is a kind of a no-brainer. This is a beautiful winter fragrance. This one really does keep you warm. In the best of ways, in the darkest and coldest of nights. Dior's Addict, Eau de Parfum. Uh, what can I say about this one? It is a vanilla bomb with the queen of the night blooming cacti. It's a buttery vanilla, substantial, corpulent, deep luscious and it is addictive and it's very 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 warm and um cozy it's a cuddle it's a cuddle perfume it's really 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 amazing in the eau de parfum concentration the eau de toilette uh, i mean they've already watered down even the eau de parfum so but my tip to you is always let it stand a little you know like this one changed. It turned really dark in color. You can see when I when I kind of just put it against the light, I see how dark the liquid has become because of the humongous amount of vanilla in here. Hmm. Yeah, it just says Eau de Toilette is a whole different perfume. Yeah, it doesn't hit the right way. It just doesn't. The Eau de Parfum is where it's at. Coco, Super Coco says, I have the original bottle with the gold twist lid. It's so delicious. Yes, I also have the OG with the twist lid with the gold one. If you can, if you can get your hands on that, of course, that's like the best thing in the world. But this will do uh, as well. It's also really, really beautiful, and really, really warms the senses in in, in winter. Now the next one it belongs to the cheapy category because you can get it at CVS uh, on Amazon. I mean, in a lot of different places, and uh, the lychee, the lychee in this one is particularly fabulous. Oh. Incantations, thank you so much for the uh, donation. Let me pop your cherry before we get to the perfume. The and live streams. Well, here's a little smoky moment. When I pop one of these cherries, it's a little tiny burst of... Ooh, got it. Mm, of gunpowder and uh, confetti. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> it mixes actually very well with the next perfume. Uh, which is lychee based and it is Giorgio's Red. This particular fragrance has been reformulated many times. Uh, it came out in the 90, well, actually, I think 89 or 90. I think, I think it's 89, like last year of the 80s. Hmm. There's a warmth to this one. It's also cool. But there's a um, lipstick accord in here that uh, it has heft. It's a beautiful, beautiful, fruity red color. And red in winter 
is a good concept. You know, it's just the color red, envisioning red in winter. You know, they say there's a power to imagination. So if you were to close your eyes and you're like feeling cold, and but you envision yourself on a beach and there's sun warming you and the warm, hot sand touching your skin, you can kind of, you know, almost make yourself believe you're warmer and that does warm up the body as well. Similar to when you close your eyes and envision red. The color red does, it's the color of passion. It's also the color of anger in many cases, but red can definitely help you warm up and heat up. Now, envisioning red as a fragrance for winter really works for me. It really, really works for me. Gorgeous. Debbie says, oh, love that too. I guess winter is my perfume time. Yeah, I, perfumes are beautiful in winter because they, if you get the right perfumes, they they enhance the energy in the air. You know, some perfumes when, some perfumes really bloom in summer on your skin and they really work best in summer, like Eden by Cacharel. Oh my gosh, it's magical in summer. It doesn't really work very well in winter because it freezes. It doesn't emanate, it doesn't project as much. So you don't get to smell all of the flowers, all of the blooms all of the nuances of it in winter. But then some other perfumes in winter, because they tend to kind of, they become more astringent. You know, they, 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 they become more stingy with projection. It's as if they're cold as well, and they kind of tend to kind of lock themselves onto your skin. You preserve them longer on your skin because of that, and then it kind of gives you that weird sensation when you put on something warm, when you layer yourself with, with different layers and warms. If you put a perfume on your chest, the heat of all those layers does allow the perfume to come out and emanate, right? Because you have the heat of the body as well, melting the perfume. But as the smell goes out into the cold air, it kind of freezes before it hits your nostrils and it turns into something more stringent. And some perfumes really work well in cold weather. This one being one of them, it, it crystallizes itself. It's more crystalline. It's beautiful in winter. Red, that's Red by Giorgio from Giorgio Beverly Hills. <clears throat> Somebody in the chat said, oh, there has to be this brand, favorite brand has to be mentioned in winter. Well, you were right. There is a, a Guerlain in this selection as well. And I think that uh, one of the best um, ingredients for winter, if it's done right, is sandalwood. Not every sandalwood, but Samsara's sandalwood is definitely a good one in winter. Uh, Samsara is a good winter fragrance because it is subtle, delicate, soft, and yet alluring, and warm just to the right degree. It's not over warm, it's not overpowering, it's not overbearing, but it's, it's a comforting smell. It's a smell that makes you feel comfortable. It makes you feel safe somehow. In summer, it can become a little bit overbearing, overpowering. In winter, again, for that reason, that it becomes more astringent, it locks itself in whilst remaining warm by its nature because sandalwood has a warmth to it. So the cold weather in combination with the warm nature of sandalwood delivers some like a cradle effect. It cradles you, it lulls you. It's um, a very, very soothing smell in winter. Not the best in summer for my nose, but in winter it really, really hits the spot. Samsara is really good. Five Heliotrope says, Samsara is like a hand on your thigh. Hmm. <laughs> Live and ferret. Live and ferret. Live and ferret. So that was another one. Now, the next one. Listen. <clears throat> How can you have a winter without this little beauty here? This poisoned apple poisoned with the most bitter almonds ever, but then sprinkled with a ton of vanilla, melting, cloying, sticky vanilla. You best believe. It's Dior's Hypnotic Poison in the Eau de Toilette concentration. I have the 150 ml bottle, current formula, live and ferret. Ah, oh, hypnotic poison. What can I tell you? This thing, oh, the memories. How many winters did this perfume help me get through? So speaking from personal experience, 
already from back in the day when the first editions came out with the rubberized uh, cover so that it's warm to the touch. The whole concept of the original bottle for Hypnotic Poison, the first bottle, which was covered in rubber, was that it emanates heat from within. That was the idea. So that when you touch the bottle, it's warm to the touch. You don't touch glass, which is cold. But when you touch the bottle, there's that rubber and it feels warm. It gives you the illusion that the bottle is heated up from within. I wish Dior would have maintained that concept for hypnotic poison. But alas, they went cheap on us. They cheapened the design of the bottle. It is what it is. The perfume still smells amazing, at least in its current formulation. My humble opinion only. I know some people don't like the current formula. I really enjoy the current formula. Love it. This is literally a winter fragrance like no other. Winter Wonderland. You know, visiting Santa Claus at the North Pole. You wear this perfume to visit Santa Claus at the North Pole. Literally. Because it can be gourmand, but it can also be astringent. It can be bitter. It can be sweet. Like there's, you know, there's the drama of Santa Claus and, you know, Mr. and Miss Santa or Mr. and Mr. Santa or Mrs. and Mrs. Santa. We don't know really, but there's some drama going on in the North Pole with them, you know, having fights, what kid gets what gift, what have you, you know, drama. So you wear this for the dramatic effect when you visit Santa Claus, but you also wear it for the sweet moment of getting the candy. So it can be bitter and sweet. It's a gorgeous one, gorgeous one for winter. Hmm. My mouth is watering uh, like it, it just hits the spot right now. Right now where I am, it's super cold. So smelling this makes my mouth water. That's how delicious it, it is. The next one you're never going to guess. Um, the next one is a new acquisition to my collection. Um, it is very elegant, very subdued. It is actually minimal. But because of its nature... I think this one has a um, particular type of nut in it. <laughs> That's what she said. And get your minds out of the good. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm still recovering from a cold, by the way. This one has been my friend for several weeks now. Uh, and it has warmed me up every time I felt a little bit down. It also gave me a great boost as I was recovering from my cold, sniffing on it from the bottle from time to time. And that would be... Spanish leather cologne. There it is. Spanish leather cologne by, this is a funny one, G.O.F. Trumper. Not Trump, Trumper, but still, nevertheless, funny. Uh, founded in 1875, this house, this maison has been around for a minute. And Spanish leather cologne is incredible. Um, how can I describe this one? It's refreshing, but it's also warm at the same time, which is really rare to achieve with a Cologne type of formula. Um, it's as if it's made in the UK, but produced in the UK. And it is a UK brand, right? Mayfair and St. James, London. Perfumer. Mather in St. James, London. It's warm and cold. It's a cologne that also has heft, longevity, projection. The color of this particular, you see, it's not an accident that they chose this brown, warm, red, orangey brown hue for the sticker, for the design of the label, for the perfume. It's because it smells like that as well. It has that warmth in it. It's a cologne that is warm but also peppery. It's a nice little spicy pick-me-up for winter. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. And this one also doesn't break the bank, just as a side note. This is a very, very beautiful one. Trina says, I've never heard of that one. Spanish leather. Yeah, Jesus says herbal dewy leather. Yes, it's herbal. It's dewy. It's leathery, like the name calls, Spanish leather cologne, but it's, there's a nut, there's, it's nutty as well. Beautiful, beautiful, spicy little leather uh, concoction. Great for winter. So much enjoying this one. 
Now, uh, now we're going to get to uh, the perfume that is kind of the least expected in winter, but I adore it. And I've just discovered this one also a short while ago, and I am addicted to it. Addicted. And it is kind of more of a summer fragrance, but to me it works in winter like a charm. Like a charm. And that would be Isabelle's Gardenia. Uh, it has this weird <laughs> bottle that is like warped to the side. So you kind of, depending on how you turn it, it looks like it's squished. But then if you turn it like this, it looks like it's not squished. Um, <clears throat> it's a very heavy bottle. The stopper is very heavy. This is overdose of Ilang Ilang and Gardenia notes. Um, it is so buttery. It is the weirdest thing. Um, this one keeps growing on me. I'm more and more. I'm wearing it today, by the way. Uh, that's how much I love it. Like I'm going to be talking about a lot of perfumes today, but still, this is the one that kind of takes the cake at the moment for me in this very cold weather because it not only does it remind you of sunshine and warm weather, but it also acknowledges the cold. Some perfumes are in denial of winter. Like if you wear Giorgio Beverly Hills, that perfume is in denial of winter. Winter doesn't exist for it. It's like a summery, feel-good fragrance. It's adorable. I love it to bits, but it's not really for winter. Like it's not for the cold of winter. Gardenia is different. Gardenia it speaks of summer, it speaks of warmth and rays of sunshine and beautiful weather and carefree times, but it acknowledges winter. It's not in denial of winter. It acknowledges winter and it gives you a sort of a blanket while you're wearing it to get through the cold emotionally. So for me, emotionally, this has been such an incredible discovery. I'm like kind of leaning onto it emotionally every day because this thing warms my senses, my spirit, makes me feel better, makes me feel like everything's going to be okay. Whilst bathing in winter, right? We're in the cold air, but then this thing just heats up everything. It's like butter. It's like a heated Ilang Ilang Gardenia butter, literally butter, steaming hot butter. Hmm. Ambrosial, golden. Oh my gosh. Really, really delicious. So this was number nine. Now, what would be the last one here? Well, the last one is not that niche. It's not actually niche at all. The last one is not <clears throat> one of those fragrances that a lot of people like to wear. But I feel nostalgia for this perfume every winter. Every winter, like clockwork whether it be right around the holiday season or mid-January. I crave that black wood that used to be the stopper of the bottle that now is no longer. Now they've changed the bottle, the design, and the stopper design. But I have here the OG design, and that would be Chanel's Egoist. Now you see how the stopper used to have that wooden texture. I don't know if I can zoom this in, but right there. See that beautiful wooden texture of the stopper? Oh my gosh, I love, 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 love this. Wait, hold on, let's try me instead. That wooden texture, it's a plastic stopper, but they just gave it that wooden texture so you can see it very nicely. And it has a double C on top. Anyway, Egoist. This is also a sandalwood, just like Samsara. But it's done for winter. It's, a, it's the right type of sandalwood. It's warm without being overpowering or overbearing. Now, you know. Egoist is kind of a follow-up to Bois des Îles. Why did, I, why did I not put Bois des Îles in this selection? Because I had to choose one of the two Les Exclusives. I didn't want to have too many Les Exclusives in this selection because I know not, not everybody has access to the Les Exclusives. Uh, so the one I chose, I think more for winter, was Coromandel. That was the Les Exclusive that I put into the selection. And then 
For the regular Chanel's, I took Egoiste because it is a game on Bois des Îles without being Bois des Îles. So since Coromandel doesn't have an alternative in the mass released program from Chanel, but Bois des Îles has a mass released version, which is Egoiste, I went for Egoiste. Not saying that the current version of Egoiste is bad. I would still buy it, but I'm still not done with, I still have a full bottle left of the old bottle uh, and I have here something left. And then I'm going to be purchasing sooner than later the new iteration of Egoiste, but I love it. Unfortunately, Egoiste is also not available worldwide. In some countries, you can only find Egoiste Platinum. Egoiste Platinum has nothing to do with Egoiste. Two different perfumes. Egoist Platinum is more about the lavender. Egoist is about sandalwood. And <clears throat> this one is warm, comforting, very holiday-like. This one feels like you're going home for Christmas, if you're into Christmas. If you're not into Christmas, it feels like you're going home during the cold season to stay with your family for whatever reason. You're staying with your family. It just feels like festive. A festive winter, land, winter wonderland occasion. So Egoist is definitely, definitely a top 10 winter fragrance to me. Mm. Live in Ferret. So, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Those would be my top 10 perfumes for winter. There is an honorable mention and I'm mentioning this one just because I love it to bits and it's really hard for me to not include it in this selection, even though it's kind of being discontinued or not. Dior is kind of playing with us on that front. We don't really know if it's going to become a special, special edition. But let's just say it still exists. You can still find bottles of it. And the special honorable mention goes to Patchouli Imperial. Let me zoom this in because it's a tiny bottle. There you go, Patchouli Imperial, also a beautiful, 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 beautiful patchouli fragrance for winter. This thing is amazing. Interesting how we started with the patchouli with Coromandel, and then we kind of ended with the patchouli with Patchouli Imperial. But this is just an honorable mention. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your top tens in the comment section down below. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love and subscribe. Bye.